I fancy doing old Des Des Catties uh, out in the woods today. I apologise for the uh, sound, if you can hear it in the background, because this site that I'm using isn't too far from the, where the factory is. So um, just bear with us with the noise. Um, on my last two videos, uh, I did one about being geographically challenged and I did a second one about wood shark and all that kind of stuff. What I want to do with this one, I just want to follow on a little bit um, with what I spoke about in the last two videos. I was hoping that I was going to get a few more views and get a bit of a debate going, but um, it didn't seem to happen. But who knows, hopefully some people will come through in the meantime and hopefully give some, uh, some valid comments and stuff. So, um, basically this one, it follows on. Uh, I've come out to the woods today. Um, I've got my rucksack, okay. It's got me water, some food in there. Um, it's got me axe. Obviously my video kit because I'm videoing right now. And some other bits and pieces. But what happens if I lose it? What happens if I fucking lose my rucksack, yeah? And, uh, yeah, so what happens when we lose a rucksack? Normally we have to rely on what we've got on our person. Well, I was saying before about a bit of pre-planning and preparation. I knew I was coming out today, and probably from about Wednesday this week, I've been keeping an eye on the weather forecast, whether it's either on the internet or trying just to sort of just you know follow the news and see what the weather forecast is telling me. So I've got an idea on what to bring out for the weekend, and also about what I'm wearing. I mean, at the moment here in the UK, Monday, Tuesday this week, we had like minus two, minus five. Today it's quite mild. It's a bit overcast. It's been damp, um, but it's, it's still quite warm. It's not that bad. So for me personally, the way I'm dressed, okay, I've got a base layer on. I've got a Heli Hansen base layer on. I've got my jacket on over the top, which is windproof and waterproof. I'm wearing a pair of trousers, which is obviously out of the picture. Got me hat on, keep my feet warm. Got me boots, me socks, and me undercrackers. Okay. And then all I'm left with is what's on my person, actually, in my pockets. All right, so in my pocket, or in my pockets, what I've actually got in there is as follows. On my belt, I had this little roll-away uh, pouch that I use for collecting bits and pieces in, yeah. If I go in my breast pocket, I've got some fruit leather. I've got some beef jerky, shop ball by the way, which I'm fucking ain't impressed about. And then the only other thing I've got is a tube of peanut butter, yeah? On top of that, I've got a torch, little head torch. I've got two um, little fire, uh, the cotton wool with the, with the uh, Vaseline inside a couple of straws. Got a length of paracord, um, not that long, just basically goes from the hand, stretch it across to about halfway down the other elbow. The second bit I had, I've actually used that to actually make up the uh, mylar shelter that I'll show you in a minute. I've got a piece of fat wood, an empty Rene packet, a couple of um, cold and flu capsules. Oh, and then I've got another few of those, um, the Vaseline and uh, cotton wool. In my pocket down here. Got my gloves. Wouldn't keep my hands warm, but they came a bit protected. I've got a lighter. In my other pocket. I've got a dog lead, because <laughs> I've got the dog with us. Uh, and then also I've got uh, this special tool that was made for me by someone. Oh, and I've got my phone as well. But my phone has run out of battery. Yeah, so that's fucking wrote that one off. In the cargo pockets in my Fell Ravens. I've got some dog bags. In my other pocket. Got me tobacco, filters, and then in the other pocket, I've got some birch bark which I brought in with us. Yeah, that I collected from over there. But I'll stick that back in my pocket just for, so easy, you know, so it's better just stick it back in my pocket rather than leave it all over the floor. And then the only other thing I've got, OK, 
Okay, here's my knife. Okay. And then my Ben Orford. We have a fire steel attached to that as well. I won't bother getting the fire steel out yet, but that's the that's the Ben Orford knife here. Yeah. That some of you are familiar with the Nomad. Alright. So basically that's all I've got on me. Alright. So fuck what am I gonna do? Oh the only other thing I got on me is what that I had in my pocket as well was a mylar blanket. And I've actually built a mylar shelter earlier, which I'll actually I'll show you now while I can. Down out the camera as I usually do. Bah! Right, and this is my little mylar shelter that I worked, that I made. All right, nothing special, okay, but it'll provide me with some protection from the uh, from the wind and the rain. That was another length of the paracord that I had stuck in me uh, in my pocket. Okay, as some of you might know or might not know, when you're using mylar, it's quite a it's quite a, a thin, fragile material, really. What I've done to attach that, I've basically used a little bit of birch. I've rounded it off and then that's in there and that's acting like a toggle and a guy line and that's holding my one of my uh, my birch branches that I've used to create a sort of bit of a hoop. Inside I've got another, you can't really see it, but I've got another length of willow that's just creating a, just basically lifting the mylar off, off my face or off my body, yeah. And then at the bottom there's another piece of um, uh, birch branch here that's, that's actually been tied onto uh, that's been tied onto the mylar as well, and then basically all I've done now is just weighed it down with some with some uh, birch branches, and then I've stacked up a load of leaves just to sort of give it a little bit of a to act as a draft excluder. Yeah. So that was the only other thing that I had in my pocket. Okay, the mylar as well. Okay. Right, so let's turn the camera back round onto me. Right, so there it is. I ain't got no cooking pot. I've got no water. I'm not going to drink my own piss. Because <laughs> I just don't see the fucking point in it. But at least what I can do for now, okay, you know, alright, admittedly this forklift driver's right over the back and I can shout my arse off. All right, I ain't even got a whistle on me. Alright, so being able to attract attention is going to be a bit difficult. Alright, so here it is. Alright, what have I got? I've built my shelter, I've provided myself with a little bit of protection just to see the night out, okay? You might be in a little bit of a flap, yeah, because you're worried about, oh, you know, I'm, I need to communicate, I need to get home, I need to, you know, all that stuff that's going on outside this, you know, outside the woods, okay? But admittedly, what you need to concentrate on and focus on is you, you right now, you what's going on up here and you what's going on around you, alright? So basically, you get your shelter up get yourself some protection you've got immediate protection because you're wearing clothing all right my fleece my little fleece uh, gillet that I had is in my rucksack that I've lost all right but at least I've got something to at least I can at least I've got something initially with the windproof and the waterproof jacket and we had to keep me head warm okay feels a little bit more cut a bit more I find it a bit more comfy when I've got a hat on and also with this particular jacket as well it's got the hood so at least I can pull the hood over me and tuck myself in there Obviously, you know, creating a bit more of an insulation on the base, but at least that'll keep me out of the rain and the wind, keep me warm. Okay, and somewhere to sort of sit and think for a little while what I'm going to do the next day. All right, I've got tobacco. All right, so I can I can have a puff, you know, have a cigarette. All right, just to calm myself down, calm my nerves down. All right, if you don't smoke, then even better for you. All right, and then also what I've got in with my food, with these bits and pieces, they're basically acting like a comfort food. They're going to give me a little bit of energy. Slow energy release, especially with peanut butter. Oh well, actually, that'll give you a bit more of an energy release quicker. And then I've obviously got the beef jerky and the and the um, and the apple leather. Okay, to sort of just snack on through the evening, just to keep me calm and keep me based. Okay. All right, I've got um, uh, you know cold tablets in there and that if I want to take them. But pff, you know that you're only going to feel that offset initially because you ain't been drinking any fluid. All right. But really, when you think about it, you have got approximately about two days gate, haven't you? I mean, they say it's three days without water, but, you know, fucking hell, I, I, I don't want to go that long without water, to be quite honest. So, um, and obviously then you start, you know, mentally as well, you start thinking, of, you, you start making rash decisions, you start making mistakes probably even more than what you'd be doing right now. All right? So that's basically all I've got on me. Okay. Um, 
it's all very clean and clinical to say, yeah, you know, I would use my saw and all that, but I didn't have a saw on me. All right, that's in my rucksack that I've left fucking miles over there. All right, but at least at the at the immediate time, what I can do is get myself some shelter up, to get myself a bit of protection, make a fire. I've got the fire steel and everything to make myself a fire. Right, I've got tons of cotton wool in there that I can use to make a fire. Yeah. Get myself a little bit of heat there. That's going to provide me with a little bit of protection as well from from um, from maybe animals and stuff like that, from insects and all the rest of it. And it's also giving you give you a bit of protection from the cold. Um, you've got obviously the, the the little mylar shelter there to just sort of sit in and keep out of the uh, the wind and the rain if it is raining. Okay. And then in the morning, what you can do is obviously you know get your ass out and try and get yourself home, get yourself out of that situation. You know, try and get yourself out of that immediate emergency situation as it were um, there's plenty of puddles over there I could go and collect some water in my dog bags yeah then bring it back over here I could then put that through one of my socks and take all the um, all the uh, oh god I forgot what I was going to say then forgot all, uh, to take all the um, all the all the bark and, and all the mud and sediment and all that kind of stuff out of the water and then I might want to put it through a second sock for example but then again it's my socks in it you know what I, mean? I don't want to get my feet wet um, and then you know try and try and sort yourself out if you can in the morning you know try and sort yourself out in the morning basically what this is is just a bit of an emergency sort of stop gap yeah and it's also a good thing to think about what you actually carry on your person all right some people carry yeah well I'll have my possible pouch well, you're not always going to have your possible pouch of you well you might do which is again that's pre-planning and preparation it's what you want to be doing all right but I left my possible pouch at home but then again I like to think that I've got enough bits on my person to sort of you know sort of what I've got here I can I can make do it can get me out of a it can get me out of a sort of like a short-term situation as it were all right so um a bit of food for thought there all right so uh Thanks for watching folks, take care, have a good one.